Today, I am here with Christopher Wick. So Christopher is a heart-centered entrepreneur with uh, talent for numbers. Yeah. As an entrepreneur who's won over 14 awards and helped 500 companies by the age of 30, Christopher has built, bought, and sold various companies related to marketing, e-commerce, real estate, retail, and investing. Currently, Christopher is chairman of Say Yes Enterprises, LLC, a Texas-based investment management company that acquires, builds, and sells companies. Chris has tremendous uh, passion for helping people thrive in their companies, grow their profits, thereby growing their teams, families, and impacting their communities. Because let's get people to kind of know you. How did you get into this space? And start wherever you're comfortable, but just kind of tell us your origin story and how you got into mergers and acquisitions. Sure. So you're going to love my origin story with M&A. And to your listeners, either it's a wonderful hero's journey or it's a cautionary tale. So all throughout my 20s, I built a marketing agency, which I later sold. So all throughout my 20s, I was a consultant and I had the gift of working with over 500 companies and really getting to see behind the screens of what was happening with some of the most successful companies that we know and love. When I was 29 years old, I had an aha moment. And this aha moment, you've had these, your listeners have had these. And my aha moment was this. I've helped over 500 businesses. What if I co-owned or had equity in each of those businesses? What would I look like? What would my career look like? And so at the age of 29, with no training, no experience, no how-to manual, no M&A mentor, I went out and bought my first business because I thought, you know, if I've helped over half a thousand business owners do this all throughout my career as a consultant, I want to do it on my own business. And now that's the person I get to be because I've done so many deals. I get to mentor people and here's how to do a deal like the first one. Here's how to avoid the failure like the second one. So that's how I got started. And now I really base my entire career around mentoring others. I've got students in MA, I've got partners in MA. And doing things like this to share these stories. What would you say to somebody who's just like looking around right now thinking, do I go create a business? I got this idea or do I go buy one? Oh, well, I really respect your story about the online dating service and losing it all. Because I I can bet with total certainty you learn more in that deal versus your last successful one, just like I did. And here's what I've got to say. With those who are out there questioning, what do I do next? One of the biggest problems with my second deal that I did is it was a startup disguised as a business. And startups are very attractive. People are always wanting to ride and bet on the horse that's going to win. I don't invest in startups. As an investor, I invest in history. I invest in historical performance. So for someone who's trying to make a pivot, and you and I both know there's lots of entrepreneurs out there thinking, okay, I've got to start over. And maybe it's the economy. Maybe it's a failed deal like you and I both had. I tell my students and my business partners, the best thing that you could ever do is go buy something that's already working. I see that you actually have a specialty or a passion around helping businesses maximize their exit, right? So what what does that look like? I, I, I've seen some uh, stuff on your LinkedIn profile that caught my eye about helping people hit their, what do you call it? Their dream number or their uh, freedom number. Yes. And and freedom is why we do any of this. And that's why an entrepreneur like you and I, we're going to go push that lawnmower five miles so we can uh, go get the opportunity to be an entrepreneur and, and get that chance to work with dad, the panning company. And so when it comes to freedom, entrepreneurs, we're willing to sacrifice relationships, time, health in order to make our dream happen. The challenge is, is most entrepreneurs get stuck in what I call the hustle trap, which I think is one of the biggest lies ever sold to our society, which is work hard and produce and you'll be valuable. One of the first things I do with entrepreneurs is have them step back because when you're in it, you cannot see the forest from the trees. You can't see the market that could have worked. You can't see that person you need to hire. And so it all begins with what I think is the most important question that everybody's walking around with which is what do you want? Now there's a loving way to say that. Like when I talk to people on conference calls, my first question is always, what would be the best thing that you can get out of our time together today? I'm basically asking, what do you want? Because I want to deliver that. And that's where a lot of entrepreneurs need clarity and 
understanding how they can get that. A lot of entrepreneurs I meet who want to sell their businesses don't think they can get what they want. What is a good exit plan look like? Because uh, I think a lot of our listeners out there, they're either buying businesses to exit at some point or they're already owning a business and they're looking like, what would it look like to sell? And nobody, <laughs> very few people truly have what I would refer to as a good exit plan. You know, they, they don't, you know, unless they've like followed one of the other mentors that are out there, they don't have a data room with PowerPoints and all the stuff they need to have to present well to buyers like you or I. Right. So what is it, what would, what would you look for in a good exit plan? So there's two types of exits. One, there's exiting the business, which is selling and, uh, you know, getting to achieve your freedom number. You get to move on to a new opportunity like that entrepreneur that you're working with. The second type of exit is exiting the org chart. And so when I work with entrepreneurs, sometimes people get scared thinking about exiting because they've been a lawyer all their life or they've been a landscaper all their life. They've been HVAC all their life. And so one of the first things I do is I help them understand how can you exit the org chart? So you still own the business, but really, how can we create a lifestyle business to where you're not in the day to day? And there's an evil plan behind that. The evil plan behind that is, is if I can help you exit the org chart, something magical is about to happen. Guys like you and I, we are not going to buy jobs. And I can't tell you how many times I have to have that conversation of, you don't have enough team in place. You're making lots of money. One of the reasons you're making lots of money is because you're not paying payroll. So if we can help entrepreneurs exit the org chart and to imagine a business that runs without them, one, we're going to help them exit no matter what. And number two, we're going to help them achieve their freedom number because their business will actually be a business and not a professional job. You have some experience in like, scaling are you doing scaling through acquisition like buying and merging companies together and scaling that way or do you go old school too and 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 just like clean up their marketing clean up their uh all their stuff well but the answer is both and how this even happened was such a great example of letting the market guide you when i started my acquisition from years ago i really thought okay i'm gonna go out and buy a bunch of businesses have a bunch of fun and 90 percent of the sellers i encountered really didn't need a buyer, they needed a growth partner. And so I was talking to one of my team members and I, I graciously give her credit. And I said, look, most of our people are wanting to partner with us. We need to make a program. And one of my team members came up with the Gap Partner Program, the Growth Acquisition Partner Program, where we partner with sellers to get them to a sellable stage or to get them to a freedom number. And so we've got growth or a larger business will grow through acquisitions, will buy lists, will buy other businesses that can feed into that. Or with some of our smaller businesses, it's boots on the ground, understanding paid ads, understanding referral marketing. And truly, that's a sign of a good entrepreneur to see what the market is telling you. And I always want to make sure that I help a seller understand what's really going to happen. And I talk about small incremental changes that lead to big growth, like understanding your list and really using that very well. That's free money. Understanding referral marketing and leveraging your partnerships. That's free money. Lots of people will sell you to click buttons and launch ads and make a funnel. But really I start much uh, more conservatively when it comes to growth, because I want to help my business partners maximize their spend and get them more runway. Because if I say, oh, hey, we can grow your business, but it's going to cost you $50,000 in paid ads. That's going to scare people. But if I say, hey, we're going to partner in your first month, all we're going to do is we're going to focus on free money. That's really exciting. What's one area around mergers and acquisitions that you're still curious about and kind of watching and, and, and observing? Oh, what a phenomenal question. An area of M&A that I'm still working on personally improving is integration. And when we acquire a business, how we help our team integrate it in a way that's going to really uh, make the process very smooth for the seller and also our team. Something I've noticed is one of our challenges is we will take a lot of the burden on in a deal just to make sure the seller has a great experience. So integration, I think, is what we're focused on. And truly, the reason why I mentioned that is one, is being completely authentic, but also two, that sellers have to think about integration. I ask a seller on every first call they have with me or my team is, 
what's your transition plan? Because you've got to have a really good integration plan. That's what I'm focused on. And I think that's a good lesson for anyone in any stage, whether they're a startup entrepreneur or an entrepreneur that's looking for an exit plan or an M&A person. Because I tell my students in M&A, just because you can doesn't mean you should. So one way to do, you know, to avoid that is just to really market well and actually have five, six, seven things to look at. Right. The other one is what you're talking about is really, and you should do both. You should have multiple things to look at so you're not really excited about something you shouldn't be. And um, was that, you know, and then the second thing is you got to know what is your exit plan. And I would say two to three, like you should have two or three exits.